Which is from the war zone, CNN senior international correspondent Matthew Chance is in the midst of the violence. Will you join me in the Georgian town of Gori, a short distance from South Ossetia, and one of the places that's been routinely targeted by Russian forces for attack. This is one of the residential compounds that has come under attack in recent days. Dozens of people were killed here. And you can see the devastation those bombs have caused. Here, the remains of a vehicle, the twisted metal there strewn over the whole area. There are also military installations in Gori that have come under attack by the Russian Air Force. It's also the town that's been the scene of some dramatic images over the course of this day. Mikhail Saakashvili, the Georgian president, was touring bomb sites in Gori, giving interviews when there was some kind of security alert. A member of his security team shouted to cover him, and he was torn away by bodyguards and pushed to the ground. Apparently fearing an air raid, they piled extra flak jackets on top of him as onlookers fled. No jets were seen or heard, and no one was injured. But these images really underline just how dangerous, how volatile Georgia has become in parts on an everyday basis as Russian and Georgian forces continue to be locked in this bitter conflict. Matthew Chance, CNN in Gori, Georgia. This hour, President Bush is headed home from the Beijing Olympics, but the spirit of international goodwill, of course, overshadowed by Russia's military offensive. I express my grave concern about the uh, disproportionate response of Russia and that um, we strongly condemn uh, you know, bombing outside of South Ossetia. Uh, it was just interesting to me that here we are uh, you know, trying to promote uh, peace and harmony and, and we're witnessing a conflict take place. While in China, President Bush complained directly to Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin. He also complained by phone to Russian President Dmitry Medvedev. Also, plenty of talk at the United Nations, heated words and accusations at the Security Council. The Russian ambassador is saying the U.S. may be responsible for what's going on in Georgia. There are some who may think that actually the United States encouraged Georgia to uh, launch this reckless adventure. Uh, with the amount of advisors and visits, and Secretary Rice was there just a few days ago, and the joint uh, Georgian military maneuvers uh, were uh, finished just the 7th of uh, August, hours before they launched uh, their uh, military operation. But uh, as I said in the chamber, uh, we don't want to believe that. Uh, we think that uh, there uh, may have been what may have happened, as uh, happened before, you remember the history of, of uh, the, the war, uh, the invasion of Kuwait by Iraq back in 1991. Who said what and what, how it was interpreted? The Security Council hasn't come up with a resolution yet on this conflict. So who are the key players here to watch in this crisis? Well, there's Russian President Dmitry Medvedev. He says a major part of the military operation has been completed in South Ossetia. He is expected to begin talks tomorrow on a ceasefire plan that's backed by the European Union. French President Nicolas Sarkozy, who also serves as the EU president, will promote the agreement through shuttle diplomacy. Tomorrow he'll visit the capitals of both Russia and Georgia, and in Tbilisi he'll meet with Georgia's president, Mikhail Saakashvili. He has already signed this agreement. This uh, really is a potential powder keg, Russia reasserting itself as a superpower. Here's CNN's Tim Lister with more. A small town in Georgia may be the latest outpost in a resurgent Cold War. The fighting in South Ossetia and Abkhazia is not over mineral wealth or strategic real estate. It's about old-fashioned nationalism on both sides. The people of Georgia have always resented Russian dominance before, during and since the Soviet era. President Mikhail Saakashvili wants his country accepted into the European Union and NATO. When President Bush visited Georgia in 2005, he received a rapturous welcome and said of Saakashvili, The President uh, is very clear about his intentions to meet the obligations to join NATO. To Moscow, an intolerable provocation. Regional observers say Russian leaders now see an opportunity to flex their muscles in what's known as the near abroad. They're not unhappy that the Americans are distracted and bogged down in Iraq with Afghanistan and with Iran. And second, they have almost an exaggerated notion of their own ability to shape things and to control things across Eurasia. As President Vladimir Putin warned repeatedly that if Kosovo was allowed independence from Serbia, 
and South Ossetia and Abkhazia had the same right. The West went ahead and supported an independent Kosovo, Putin did not forget. But Moscow sees its sphere of influence as going far beyond Georgia to include Ukraine, where the Russian Black Sea fleet is still based. If those Russian ships leave that port in the Black Sea, and if Ukraine decides that it is not going to allow those ships back into that port because Ukraine has always claimed that as Ukrainian territory, that is a potentially much greater uh, conflagration involving a wider regional area. There are also Russian separatists in Moldova that have long demanded independence. In the past, Russia has used economic pressure against its neighbors, cutting fuel supplies to Ukraine and halting rail services to and from Georgia. Moscow also opposes plans for a natural gas pipeline that would connect Central Asia to Western markets through Georgia, but avoid Russia. So even if this conflict is resolved, a wider struggle may continue. There was tremendous unhappiness amongst the Siloviki, the, the elite now in control in, in Moscow, about the demise of the Soviet Union. And success would be seen in some kind of resurrection of what had been the former Soviet Union or the former Soviet bloc. This runs in contradiction with Georgia's and Ukraine's aspirations to join NATO. Once part of the Soviet Union, many of Russia's smaller neighbors from the Baltic to the Black Sea see their future as part of a democratic Europe. But Russia is clearly ready to assert itself in what it considers its backyard. Tim to CNN, Atlantic.